Back in the 1990s, I first had my information that I translated from Spanish put on the internet in 1994, what, 28 years ago. And it was about uh, 29 guitar makers in Granada. I had taken the Eusebio Rioja book, published in 1975, I had a 1983 reprint, and so I would look at each biography and put it into a single paragraph. And so the phone rang off the hook at my previous location. It was half the size. Got a 1,200 square foot store now, but I had a 585 square foot store that I was in for 26 years. And so John Arashid, who had flamenco.org, he said, you know, you should uh, write articles. People will feel they're getting more than just a sale from you. So in 1997, I created uh, what was called uh, Desde el Escritorio de Randy Osborne, from the desk of Randy Osborne. And these are still on my .org site. So today I'm going to read about an early sighting of the use of rest stroke technique in Northern Europe. So this was published on the 24th of February, 1997. And I'm going to talk about the gentleman in the center here. This is Jose Chiebra from Sevilla. This photo is from 1864. It's from the collection of Javier Suarez Pajares. And I found this a couple weeks ago on one of my colleagues, uh, YouTube videos. Julio Imeno, who's a professor in Sevilla, he wrote an article called Antonio de Torres y el Renacimiento de la Guitarra. Antonio de Torres and the Renaissance of the Guitar. This is seven of seven episodes that he did. You should check it out. So in, 18, in 1948, in the Guitar Review magazine, there appeared a translation from the Russian of the memoirs of Makarov. He was a Russian industrialist, wealthy, and he uh, created uh, composition competitions amongst the best of the uh, people that we rever today. It was the last of four installments. Nikolai Makarov, 1810 to 1890, was a well-to-do classical guitar aficionado who traveled extensively to hear new players who had attained virtuoso status. He was also a colleague of many famous guitarists at the time, guitar makers in Vienna, Paris, St. Petersburg, and other cities were graced by his visits. In early 1856, he arranged a guitar competition, uh, a guitar composition and guitar making contest in Brussels, uh, Belgium. The most notable players and makers were contestants. The players were Napoleon Kost, Johann Kasper Mertz, who died 10 days before his composition arrived at the address of the competition. Guitar makers Johann Scherzer of Vienna. He worked for uh, Johann Stauffer before he went on his own. And he, in uh, one of the other parts of the memoirs of Makarov, said he got 25 marks for a guitar that Johann Stauffer sold for 125 marks. Typical uh, aspect of what happens. Those that have the wood hire people. Those that don't have wood work for people that have wood. Goes on in Paracho Michoacan, goes on in the Pacific Rim as well. Fisher of Vienna is another luthier to the conservatory. Argesen of uh, St. Petersburg, uh, Eirik of Paris, successor to Rene Lacote, and others from Prague and Munich. Guitar makers were involved in a building competition. One of the contestants was uh, Jose Chiebra uh, from Seville. He was born at the beginning of the 19th century in the 
1830s he can be found playing in uh, multiple guitarists uh, venues uh, in London and he also performed in Paris so Makarov said that his compositions were mediocre but had a lot of originality and were quite different than the works of the well-known Giuliani and Johann Caspar Mertz. He continues to say that truly Chiebra's songs are sweet and melodious when played by the composer. Makarov claims the main defect was the overall monotony. He says the style was poor, only suitable for dancing. Now when we speak of dancing, we're talking about flamenco. He was from Sevilla in 1842. Singers started getting paid for the early days of the Cafe Cantantes in Sevilla. Sounds like flamenco to me. Please read on. Makarov says for the purpose of having a varied repertoire, he learned two compositions of Chiebra's and that 20 years later he was well received for a performance of these songs on a boat trip abroad, especially by the ladies. Dispensing with Makarov's thoughts of Chiebra's compositional skills, he goes on to say much about Chiebra's technique. Just like every other Spanish guitarist, his fingernails were long. He did not hold his hand perpendicular to the strings, kind of Taraga style, but at an angle. To quote again, moreover, he did not actually strike the string with the nail, but simply pressed it on the string, slipping off from string onto the neck of the guitar. Sounds like restroke, apoyando technique to me, especially when we read the glowing review of his tone and that no one else had it. Makarov says in this manner, Chiebra was able to draw remarkably tender, deep, melodious tones from the guitar, unequaled by any of those in the virtuoso circle. Not even the great Zani de Ferranti, the court guitarist to the King of Belgium since 1834. Zeni de Ferranti uh, spoke four languages, traveled everywhere, and could speak the language of the land where he was doing concerts. And Zeni de Ferranti was known for the softness of his playing. Chiebra's vibrato, he maintains, was really divine. The guitar actually sobbed, wailed, and sighed. Chiebra only exhibited this on slow songs. When he played fast, the reverse side of the metal was to be found. He derived a disagreeable metallic sound rather than the velvety tones of his adagios, having to produce free strokes instead of being able to let the nails slide off to the adjacent string. Now from another source, Domingo Pratt in his tome written in, or I should say published in 1934, Dicionario de Guitaristas y Guitareros, published in Buenos Aires by uh, Jose B. Romero tells us that Chiebra played on both six and eight string guitars. Chiebra, having left his profession as a lawyer to be a concert artist, was well thought of by professors and intellectuals alike. In many cases, his concerts were improvised completely. The only peculiarity was that he would announce to his listeners how long the next song would last. Chieber wrote 25 plus opuses, which included Resgiato, Staccato, Ponticello techniques well marked in the scores. Some of his works were published by A. Lafau in Paris. So it's very possible or highly likely that Chieber's use of the reststroke actually predates the documentation of Julian Arca's use of the same, which was passed down to Don Francisco Tarraga. Another possibility is that his oblique angle at which he plucked the strings could be the same school as Presti Lagoya, where the right hand strikes the string on the right side, not the left side of the nail. A uh, picture is worth a thousand words. So I'd like to show you a picture of Jose Chieber again. He's the individual in the center of this photo, seated, and this is from 1864. It's from May. 27th of 1864.